That's insane. Is it? From a Lexus? Let me listen. Just try it. Let me listen. Oh my God, it's so loud. Yeah, we, we caught it. You guys have to listen to this. You're recording, right? Yep. Okay, here we go. Throttle hose. Throttle hose. House. 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 There's lots of Americans house. watching this. You I sound can't. way too Canadian. Okay, house. house. How? Yeah, house. How? They're laughing at you. They're how? laughing at you. And you guys are not supposed to hear that. You said you were going to delete that. I thought I did. Uh huh. The LC500 is not that new. It's not that quick. It doesn't have the gesture controls of an 8 series or the augmented reality of an S class. In many ways, it seems old. But shift your perspective just a little bit and a renewed appreciation will dawn. To us, the LC500 still seems groundbreaking. A breath of naturally aspirated fresh air in a world of turbochargers. This is a car that happily sacrifices some performance in exchange for experience. And yes, for 2021, it's had some tweaks, which include a revised suspension setup, a reworked transmission, and it's a little bit lighter. But with 471 horsepower and 398 pound-feet of torque, it's not going to be taking down any BMW M850i's anytime soon. In fact, it somehow gives the impression that it doesn't even know that car exists. It stands alone, and seeing as it's Lexus's flagship, we want to find out if it's worthy of that title. And if you're new to Throttle House, we do car reviews, track tests, and quite a lot of messing about. So subscribe and hit the bell. Oh my, immediately upon Getting in an LC500, it feels different. It feels special. We've driven the M850i and M8 Competition, the Mercedes versions of the F-Types, all the other ones, and this has just got some different sauce. And in the land of six-figure ultra-luxury GT cars, this one's priced near the bottom. In Canada, it starts at $103,000. And look at what you get. I mean, this one has the performance package, which is what gives it the, the big wheels and the Michelin tires. And it also has the, the limited slip differential in the rear and the, the sport suspension in the rear. And it has the active four wheel steering and the adjustable ratio steering and the Alcantara headliner and the carbon fiber roof and the Alcantara seats and the carbon fiber kick panels. Yeah, you need that package. And that package costs 13,000 Canadian dollars. And in the US, it's broken down into two packages, I think. And I wouldn't want to have the car without that because at this point, I wouldn't want it to be any less sporting. It sounds incredible. is off the rev limiter in the most dramatic way. Oh. There's a sharpness to the sound of the naturally aspirated V8 that you just cannot replicate in turbocharged cars like the S560 or the M850i. However, that sharpness does not carry through to the handling. Because even though everything feels accurate, there's such a softness to this car. 
that doesn't exist in something like an F-Type. If you get in an F-Type R, it feels a lot more sporting, but then I'm just bathed in extreme comfort here. And this makes me so proud of Lexus because this car has just developed its own identity. In the world of high performance GT cars that are just playing horsepower wars, this is actually refreshingly slow. And that's where it gets mad points from me because those cars, you feel like you need to honk on it or you're not experiencing it. You're finding the next straightaway to push it to see, look what this twin turbo V8 can do. This car, even if you drive it slow or in comfort, no matter which way you choose to experience the LC500, there's such a feeling of satisfaction. I have it right now in Sport Plus mode and I have it in manual mode and the shifts are super quick. And unlike the fart you get from some turbocharged engines with double clutch transmissions, this one has a crack on the upshift. It's incredibly satisfying. I've lived with this car and it has improved my life. Every time I get in it, I love driving it. I love starting it up. I love the sounds that it makes. I love the ride. The seating position is perfect. The seats are incredibly comfortable. In fact, I called James right after I picked the car up and said right away, if I was going to drive across the country in a car, this is the one that I would choose. And if you happen to live in Europe, I know that driving across the country takes, you know, maybe a couple hours. In Canada, it's five days. I would spend five days in this car, no problem. The ride is very soft, but I, I suppose the downside of that is that maybe compared to some of the other GT sporty cars we've driven, it's not quite as buttoned down. That is like objectively a downside that I just told you, but to me, it is an upside. So cars these days are often too stiff and too serious about what they do. The, the LC500 isn't that. It has no problem reminding you that it's a GT car. It's not here to set lap times. Yeah, it could go around a corner. It's got a little bit of some diff. It'll do skids. It's got all the sporty stuff, but it is fundamentally, primarily, a grand tour. And my God, does it look good inside and out. I'm gonna go talk to James about that right now. It's beeping at me. That actually sounds great, just even just you driving in here. It sounds great all the time, at all RPMs, every second. I love it. Look at it. It's absolutely beautiful. It's a weird design though. It's old and new at the same time. It's like an Eames chair. It's both ahead of its time and behind its time. It just does not belong now. What's an Eames chair? I don't know, you've got no culture. I've got no culture. I grew up with an interior design. Is it like some sort of a Scandinavian mid-century oh. modern type of thing? This is an Eames chair, <laughs> I guess. It's an Eames chair. You, everyone will, you, when you see it, you'll know. Okay. And then okay. you'll feel like an idiot. I'm okay, getting great. I'm not sure I'm married to the color. It's a little bit too sophisticated for me with this color scheme. I think you're just trying to say that it's too old manny. Yeah, it, it, it is. It yeah. looks like a tree with the brown on the inside and the green on the outside. Well, it's actually a green after a seaweed because it's got nori in the name. Is that good? I don't know. I okay. like it. Anyway, the point is, is that, well, first of all, this comes in some crazy colors, some really bold I've colors. seen it roll by in like a, a red, like yes. a really deep red. Beautiful. And I think that a bold color suits this because it is a really bold design. Like it's not new, obviously, right? But, but when you stand next to this car, you see pictures of it and stuff, you stand next to it and you realize just how ridiculous the styling is. Like this is like six feet long. It's got this huge like whoosh, right here. But that's, but Toyota and Lexus have done that a lot recently. Like the RAV4 is a bit out there. I'm sorry, the did, are, you, are you comparing this to a RAV4? This, you're comparing this to a RAV4. What's that? <laughs> that is ridiculous. No, yeah, anyway. I think that it's beautiful. And listen, in 30 years, when we're sitting in a rocking chair. Sorry, what do you mean we? I'll probably be in a rocking chair. Yeah. I don't know. yeah, many years. My back hurts me. more every day. I think that we're gonna look back on this and go, this was one of the great designs. I think it's just so unique and, and they, they, have, they have unabashedly done something different. And not many manufacturers do that. All of BMW's cars look the same. I mean, they're trying to be bold right now by putting massive grills in the front. Yeah, you compare this working. to the design yeah. of the 8 Series Coupe, for example. Right. The eight, this, this goes much 
further towards being special than looking like a stretched Mustang. It definitely does. It's got these huge haunches right here. I love that. This looks a bit LFA with the brake light and this shape coming down. Yeah, yeah. Is it, there's no crime speed. Oh, no. They ignore the exhaust. <laughs> They've done the fake ignore exhaust. Ignore the exhaust. It's also got these 21-inch wheels, which you said you don't like. I just, yeah, the, the, in fact, I've said this about the Camry as well. This is all Toyota stuff. These, like, these high chrome against the gray. You're comparing it to a Camry now. Because these look like Camry wheels. Those do not look like Camry wheels, James. You've lost your mind. This is so different. Okay, fine. There's some similarities. I'll give you that. But the point is, is that in Lexus Toyota's lineup, this stands apart completely, in my opinion. Agreed. And well, fortunately, the specialness, specialty, specialty, continues on the inside. Oh, it even smells nice in here. It does. Actually, my cooled seat is on, so I'm going to turn that off. And, uh, uh, it looks like a tree. Okay, hold on. I'll get to that in a second. Just, wa <laughs> just watch this. Watch and observe how... Okay, so I'm going to turn my cooled seat. There's no button to turn the cooled seat off. No. So we have to use the infotainment. So I go to menu, and then I... You, no, I went too far. Climate. Where is it? Are you serious? Yeah. No, hold on. So, so you select seat and steering. How do you do that while driving? You, you, you crash. You crash. Are you, are you not being dumb? Is I'm different? not being dumb. That is how you have to do that. Were you looking for some magic cooled seat button in the armrest? No, this is the trackpad. There's a dog in the shot. Oh, he's very cute. He's eating dandelions. <laughs> eating dandelions. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I think he'd like this car. Yeah, he yeah. would, yeah. Because yeah. it's like a tree. Yep. <laughs> you, you, well, so explain to me your tree theory again right Okay, here. so how, how many years has the LC500 been around? Oh, four? Four? Five, yeah. One, two, three, four. You can. <laughs> that is the literal age of the car. Ergo, it's a tree. Yes, it is. Also, I want to say, and speaking of like bold design, I think that that section with which you're now calling the rings of a tree, going up to that handle, which is actually a, a, a stylized handle. It's a style, very carefully sculpted handle. This looks like a piece of native North American sculpture, like soapstone sculpture. So much you, thought. You know that, but you don't know an Eames chair. That's a good point. That's a good point. So I, I take one half of the culture, you've got the other, apparently. Anyway, th this, this whole section is beautifully designed. This is a bit weird. These look a bit like Shrek's ears. They do look like Shrek's ears. <laughs> He's got the things going to make an earwax candle with the sports selector button. But then this looks button. like the hood of those Star Wars things. The little guys. It, what do you mean? Which ones? Who's the little guys with the eyes? Beep, 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 beep. Oh, a Jawa! It looks like a Jawa. Boutini! Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so... Sounds like a drink. The, uh, the, the... The, the infotainment, we have, I want to cover this, get it out of the way so we can enjoy the rest of the interior. Okay. This is abhorrent is the only word. I can't believe that's the way to do the cool seat. Yeah, so we've got this trackpad, which looks like a, a trackpad from like a, a, a first generation laptop, right? Yeah. It looks physically stupid. And it, feel, it punches your finger. A little bit and it's kind of not, it, it's, you can get used to it, you can. Thankfully, it does have Apple CarPlay, okay? And, it's not the easiest to use with Apple CarPlay, but once you get used to it, it's okay. Apple CarPlay and Android Auto just solves everything. For the most part, yes, for the most part. But Apple CarPlay and Android are best used with touch screens, and this most certainly is not that. But the rest of this interior, this is like a, a cinnamon caramel tan. Mocha chocolate. Yeah, yeah, it's great. I, I really love the steering wheel is beautiful. There's one crime in the interior other than the infotainment is this. I know this will bother you. You this, know is what? Gonna, this is going to piss do James you know, off. Do you want to know why that doesn't bother me? Because that exact pattern is yeah. repeated in the headlight. And purely because of that, it makes it cool. It's also repeated kind of right there as well on that little design bit. Yeah, it's like the Z from it, Zorro. Interesting. Okay, so it's a, it gives it a pass. It should be an aluminum though. Like it should be an alloy. It is plastic. Okay, yeah, fair enough. Okay, and it, the gauge cluster is beautiful. It's not like it's unique to those. This is the same crime that BMW has made and that like the steering wheel design and the gauge cluster is similar on lower trim models, right? But I, BMW's gauge cluster is stupid. This one is not because I can push this button over here and look at this. Uh, that's the bit, that's the bit of drama that, that is a, a six of... figure GT car needs. Absolutely. And the seats are unbelievably comfortable. They're beautiful. Yeah. I do feel like I'm visiting my grandparents' house in here, especially with the seats, like looking down. Yeah, okay, it's, it's a bit old. It comes in black. But it's very comfortable. I, I think I would opt for this tan color. It's so happy in here. It is. It's so, it's so it's visually warm. relaxing. But it, this is what's going to, in 20 years, this is going to make this be so, such a thing of the past, this, this color. 
Maybe, maybe not. I think it was going to make it in, in a retro way, in a way that's like, ah, oh, that's my old grandpa. This is going to be yeah. retro. I don't know if it'll ever be retro. It's, it's an Eames chair. It's it so and it's so anachronistic as it is right now. There's a word for you. See, I got a history degree, and that is so you accidentally hit that. And that's the one thing I took from it is the word anachronistic. Well, you Google that. Un- unusable back seats. Absolutely. That's not what anachronistic means, James. But yes, I agree. It has. I was. Unus- uh, oh, that was a non sequitur. Oh. Ooh. <laughs> yes, yeah. Mark Levinson's stereo is beautiful. Nice, okay. And uh, the, the, you're right, but the back seats are completely unusable. But that is on par for the course for this. Uh, for this type of seat. Does yeah. this open as well? Or is it just a slide? It does. It, it, under here it opens. Uh, yeah, there's a little bit of space. And it's all like velvety inside. Yep. Um, other than that, I adore this car. I can tell. I really. He, he really, literally hasn't shut up about it. I have it not shut up about it. Should we do a conclusion? And wait, hold on. Before we do. Yeah. One of the things we found, Thomas loved it so much that he he ran to Auto Trader. Sometimes this happens. We review yes. cars and we run to Auto Trader yeah, or just, eBay. Just to see how much they are used. These hold their value. They hold the value, upsettingly so. Very much. Yeah. Like how much was it? Like a 2017? It was like 85 grand. 85 grand still, with like 60,000 kilometers on it. So it's on the dream list for Thomas for now. He can stick to uh, the Camry, which is still pretty out there, as we've learned. <laughs> As great as a Camry is, hopefully by now it's pretty obvious that the LC500 stole my heart, and dare I say, a little bit of James's too. Comfortable, sounds like a thunderstorm, and looks like a work of art, in coupe and now convertible form. Sure, the infotainment is clunky, and honestly, the adaptive cruise and lane keep assist feel a generation behind, but Lexus knows that you won't care because you'll be too busy enjoying the journey. And there's another thing. Because this doesn't have the sales figures of its German rivals, it means that it's a rare sight. So if you own one, or when you see one, it makes it all the more special.